Hey guys, Frank Cox here. Hey, I'm uh, gonna restore this old barrel here. This is one of the old uh, drums I had laying around. It had a basic kit on it, the old kit I used to use, and now I'm gonna upgrade this thing to a Super 55 drum. And I'm gonna show you how I'm gonna clean this thing up and then put it all back together with a brand new Super 55 kit on it. So stay tuned. All right, guys, so this uh, drum has already got a bunch of holes drilled in it and stuff. You can see that there. Uh, matter of fact, I even forgot to pull a couple of bolts out. But essentially, this thing has been used and abused, and uh, it's still blue. And it's a, it was a brand-new smooth-sided barrel when the whole build started. But anyway, what I want to do now is I want to change this thing over to the Super 55 kit. So the first thing I got to do is clean it up. If you look down inside of here... It's been cooked in a little bit. It's not real bad, but I figure while I'm at it, I might as well, you know, just burn it off on the inside and uh, do a real good power wash. And the bottom of the lid is just seasoned a little bit. But the biggest thing is I want to get this paint off of here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to light a fire inside. You've seen other videos I've done like this, so I'm not going to dwell on it a lot. Basically, we've got a shop vac here that we're going to put in the blow mode and a propane torch that we're gonna hook up to burn out the inside of the barrel. And I'm just gonna use a whole bunch of my old pallet scrap over here and yard waste and stuff like that from around the shop to burn. So anyway, I'll set this thing up on the tripod. You're gonna watch me do that in time lapse. <laughs> guys so i don't even have to tell you this thing is hot right now so we got a really good coals going in the bottom right there i shut the vacuum off i'm just going to let it sit here and burn itself out and then we'll come right back once this fires out all right guys we're back um i put my fire out i went ahead and rinsed out the inside of the barrel and uh you got it sitting up here on some pipe stands that just happens to be what i got close by next step we're going to do is we're going to wet sand the outside of this now I'll show you here, you can see, you know, bare metal in some places. You can see like a, a gray, like what that primer looks like or the barrel paint whenever it gets burned off. Um, you can go ahead and rinse this. I did spray it off, whatever, but it's a lot easier just to go ahead and wet sand this. And what I mean when I say wet sand, we've got, this one's heavier than normally what I use, but a little pad like this, I recommend somewhere around a 220 grit for like rough or down to 400 grit for real smooth. And what we're gonna do is wet the material, wet the block, and we're just gonna sand this. We're not looking to like smooth out the material. We're looking to get rid of all the loose um, powdery debris off of it, get it down to where we can actually, it's got a good surface for the paint to adhere to. And then once I get that done, I'm gonna go ahead and bring it in here and start plugging holes and welding on it if I need to um, with the welder. Like these holes right here in the side, I don't really have a use for it, and that one right there is gonna be, there's nothing gonna cover it. Whereas there's other holes on here that the intakes will cover, stuff like that. So anyway, grab you a uh, cold brew <laughs> or whatever you're drinking, cup of coffee, and I'm gonna put it on time-lapse. I'm gonna go ahead and wet sand this thing. <laughs> Okay guys, uh, this I'm really happy with that. If you feel along it, you'll feel it's really smooth. The most important thing I wanna point out is whenever you get down into where there's existing paint that's, uh, that's still on the barrel, you wanna do this technique called feather edging. I'm gonna pick up the camera and walk with it so you can see. What you'll notice is, I gotta move my beer so I don't spill it. What you'll notice about that is, if I can spin this around, you'll see that right here. And where you see the, the paint, it's a different color. And then you see the bare metal, you'll see that's like feathered out right there. 
So the reason that feather edging your paint is really important is because if, if you don't, you'll have this, you'll see the lip on the paint. When you paint over the top of that, you'll see that edge right there. So let's just hypothetically say that you have an existing cooker or drum smoker that you've paint, that had a really nice paint job on it at one time. You left the lid off of it and for some reason the thing, you know, lit on fire like a rocket stove and now you got a big old nasty brown spot right here. That's totally fixable. I just showed you this whole process is how you would fix that and get ready to repaint. So the next step I got to do here is dry this thing off. I'm going to actually aim a little heater, a shop heater at it so that I can evaporate all the moisture off of here quickly. And uh, then we're going to go in here and start patching holes and I'll show you how to do that. So this is the little Bauer shop heater. It's got a little flame it's burning in there. Oh, there's propane bottle. And I've just got it aimed at this barrel just to dry it off. Okay, so the little heater's doing its job, boy. Look at that drying off real good and uh quicker we can get that thing dry the more likely it is that we're not just going to turn into a rust bucket from all that moisture sitting on there air drying i am going to actually try to paint this and do a nice job so that's why i'm taking my time to get that done almost there Okay guys, we've got our uh, barrel dried off and I'm real happy with how clean that came out. It, it looks good. So down over here, you'll see one of the holes I was talking about. So when you change over from whatever you had on your barrel before, it could have been pipe nipples, it could have been magnets, it could have been whatever, you might have a couple of holes that don't match up uh, when, you're, when you're changing over to the Super 55 kit. If you, especially if you decide to use the handles. For instance, these handle holes right here, I know for a fact won't match up. So I gotta plug all those holes. Now, one solution would be just to rotate the drum a little bit and uh, or lower those holes and put different bolts in those holes. Like if you can't weld or something like that, you can honestly use foil tape, JB weld, something like that. It doesn't really matter, just plug the holes, right? In my case, I want those things, or actually another good one is pop rivets. You can put a 3 16 pop rivet or a quarter inch pop rivet in that hole if you have a pop rivet gun. Um, but in my case, I'm gonna weld them shut because I can weld. So I'm gonna show you kind of my technique for how I do that. All right guys, so I'm gonna use this ESOB welder here. This is an ESOB 215 IC. So I just looked at the door chart real quick and it's saying 16 gauges around 16 and 130. That's kind of what I got the machine set for. Sometimes I'll go ahead and run it down even thinner than the material that I'm running when I'm trigger welding the hole shut on really thin material. Um, another thing you could do is put a patch on the inside, like a, just a small square or something like that of 16 gauge plate on the inside, and that'll, keep, that'll help keep you from burning that hole out bigger. Um, I usually start at the top of the hole and work my way down. It's, anyway, so I'm gonna go on over here and get that going. All right, now if you're not familiar with MIG welding, this is a MIG welding gun. This is the nozzle, that's the wire. Boop, boop, you pull the trigger, a little wire comes out, a little bit of gas comes out. The gas is gonna blow the oxygen away from that spot and the wire is gonna be what's melted and left inside the hole. So here, I'm gonna try to do this where you can kind of see it maybe. So get that camera up here and show you. See, I just made one little tack inside the hole. Now I'm gonna make another tack on that one and I'm gonna start kind of letting that, gravity's gonna pull that down and we're gonna wind up burning into the edge around that hole until we plug it solid. And then we can always come back in with a file or a grinder and smooth it out if we want. So what we did there is we just pulled the trigger, we welded a little bit of wire in there, we waited for that puddle to cool, and then we hit it again. And then we waited for the puddle to cool, like you'll see the red go away. It'll cool off enough to where the red's not there as bright, and uh, then we'll hit it again. So I'm just gonna repeat that process all the way around. Oh no, what do you think? That looks pretty good to me. We uh we got 
with the holes left in here for the cooking grates, but all the other holes, well, I didn't fill in the intake holes because I'm going to cover them up. But all the other holes are welded shut. Now I'm going to take a grinder and I'm just going to kind of take it and feather, just like we were talking a minute ago about feather edging. I'm just going to hit that a little bit and just kind of feather edge that down a little bit. Okay, guys, now we're going to take and feather edge the edge of this, like I just said. And I'm going to use a thing here called a flap disc. Now, this flap disc is a 60 grit flap disc and it's got a slight bevel to it. Um, I like the beveled ones. You can get them that are perfectly flat. I don't like those because my arbor and the bolt coming out of the end of the grinder get in the way. These beveled ones, I can take and pitch it on a surface and it's not gonna get, this isn't gonna be hitting all the time. So that's just a little light polish on that. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and do all of these real quick and then I'll kind of show you. I'm just gonna hit it just a little bit more. And if you want, you can use a file, you can use a lot of other things. Um, you know, a lighter grit uh, flap disc would work, um, a DA sander, whatever. It depends on how perfect you want this to look. In my world, I don't really care. I just want it to be down pretty close to flush. So here we go. So I'm gonna pull the camera up here and you can kind of see that doesn't look too bad. Um, you can see that there's some grinder marks and stuff in that. That's what you would use a file for is to, to knock those down, like a body rasp or a body file of some kind. Um, if you're wanting it to be perfect, this is an ugly drum smoker and I don't really care. So anyway, but I knocked off that big, that big, spin this around so you can see. I just knocked off that, that big head that was on top of that weld that I just did. Anyway, I'm gonna finish doing all the rest of these. Okay, guys, I'm real happy with that right there. So um, now you could go as deep into weeds as you want about getting all this perfect in here. I just hit it with a flap disc because that's all I really care about on this drum. Um, anyway, so I've got it flap disc down. You can still see a little bit of grinder marks. You can take your time and feather edge that, like I say, if you want. But at this point, we've completely refurbished this barrel to the point where I can build a brand new Super 55 drum smoker kit out of this one. So uh, anyway, don't be afraid to restore your drum from the last build you did or whatever and update it with new parts. You can totally do it with a little bit of elbow grease and some cleanup. After all, barrels are real expensive right now. So in the next video, I'm gonna go ahead and start laying this thing out, drilling holes, and we'll start test fitting some parts on here before we paint it. So stay tuned.